One minute, 20 T minus one three minute seconds. and 20 seconds. As we lead up to the final moments of launch, to repeat an earlier announcement, we will have ignition at zero, and some three seconds after ignition, the launch vehicle will lift off on the start of the Gemini 6 flight. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60. T minus 50. Astronaut Sherrar making some final comm checks. T minus 40 seconds and counting. During the final 10 seconds of the count, astronaut Alan Bean will give the count to the astronauts in the spacecraft. T minus 30. T minus 25 seconds and coming. The pre valves on the launch vehicle have been opened. This permits the propellants to come down just above the thrust chamber. T minus 15 seconds and counting. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero. Now we've got, we've got a shutdown. No lift off. The engines have shut down. Fuel pressure is lowering, Wally Shiraz says. Apparently in safe condition. We're watching the fuel pressure lower very carefully. There will be no launch. A critical moment now, getting the fuel pressure down. The oxidizer pressure lowering nicely. Clockhouse is asking for a readout on all tank pressures. Any malfunction that would have kept the ship from getting into orbit would have caused those engines to shut down on the pad and something did occur immediately after ignition as you saw the engines simply burst once and then shut down an automatic shutdown Elliot C is putting in a call to seven to advise them that we will not have a lift off Frank Mormon says Roger we saw it we saw it light up we saw it shut down by golly, Gemini 7 up there above the Cape saw what we saw here, of course, at 185 miles distance. He assures uh, Frank Gorman that everything's still okay on the ground here, and we'll keep him advised. All safety features have been built in for these rockets, of course, but once you have an ignition like that, and fuel has begun to pour into the thrust chambers, and have, there is a shutdown, there is always danger and concern until the fuel pressure has been brought back to normal, until they assure that the valves are cleared of fuel coming down into the combustion chamber, uh, there will be uh, some concern, crossed fingers. And then, of course, off and... Uh, Tom Stafford and Wally Shira talking now about what they saw at the moment of ignition and then how they saw the various pressure gauges and dials start, start dropping just as we did here in Houston and as I'm sure they did in the blockhouse. This is of course the first time that this has happened in our manned space the shutdown program. would have come before 1.6 seconds. It's approximately at that point where we reach 77% of a full thrust and beyond that point uh, an on-the-pad shutdown is not possible. not had this in the Mercury nor the Gemini program. A lot of unmanned vehicles have had shutdowns on the pad. It's not an unheard of thing in our missile program, but it is unprecedented in the manned space program and causes this concern. Of course, Shiraz and uh, Stafford, who were thwarted in their flight October 25th, have been flight, uh, thwarted quickly, again on this. There are two the theories flight. here on what caused the shutdown. One, it was an automatic switchover, which is a condition that automatically shuts down the engine. That is a guidance switchover from primary to secondary guidance. This can occur in the first second and a half. And
of the astronauts as they had that ignition failure. Did 
you call Houston? Good, uh, John Frank and Jeremy still on a bunch of sales. Oh, they're pretty well positioned there, and I'm still sitting on a tight edge. Okay, Dan, you're right. I've seen that one before. You're right, that's for sure, Chris. Okay, we were too dumb on the rest of the guests, but we'll uh, do a good track here, Chris. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your help, Chris. Hey, Polly. What? Vehicle standing by, telling we're still tracking them, and back on spacecraft seven. 